Alright, open it up and clap it. There we go. Okay, now this one you gotta do it loud. I'm gonna go all the way up. Smack! Wait, wait. Second sticks. Hey, boy, it's very heavy, ain't it? Hey, right here, right here. You see that one? That's quasi-mania. Kill that. Perfect. Alright. Doing my second time doing this. Give me love and grace. I'm gonna need you doing it. Good? I need you to look stunning. This is the way that we look. Look. Hey, all right, give it up, give it up, give it up. Hey, y'all, and we are back here at Pass For Us, season two, with a lovely special guest, Alicia Pascual Pena. Y'all give it up for our guest today. I mean, let's hop right into it. We want to get right on path, right on point. Yes. So, I hear you're from New York, Bronx, New York in the house. Yeah, boogie down. Boogie down. <laughs> I mean, actor, dancer, model. Yes. Where does your journey really start? Um, well, thank you for that lovely introduction. Yeah. I'm from New York, like you said, and thankfully I had a mother that really uh, believed in my little crazy mm. self. Three um, years old, right? Yeah, very long story short, <laughs> people, saw me be pretty like eccentric and energetic and always artistic um like my mom would find me watching like the ballet at like on pbs at 3 a.m and she would be like this kid is weird but um she had um people around her say do something with that yeah. and she really championed me um in that and yeah i was first signed by a modeling agency when i was three years old yeah. so most people don't know that but i know no life outside of the entertainment industry so gotcha. it's been a lot of navigating the adversity and growing into my own and understanding what my truth is in the industry. And yeah, now I live in LA and I've been really blessed to accomplish some of my goals and hopefully continue growing in that. Yeah, so let's dive into it, yeah. right? How does a three-year-old <laughs> go to getting signed with a modeling agency? Like, what do you need to even get connected or started? Like, yeah, what for, does that for sure. Look like? Um, even though it's literally my life, it still feels odd and peculiar to say that. Um, that yeah. I started working when I was three. Um, always had a job, but uh, <laughs> I think it, it really just took a mother that was willing to have an open mind. Yeah. Because you know, I come from an immigrant household. Um, I'm first generation American on my dad's side. So all that goes to say it was super unfamiliar. And frankly, um, a lot of my family was like, this isn't what you do when you come to this country. Um, you don't pursue the arts, it's not the most stable thing. But essentially, my mom at a really young age said, if you're willing to work hard, we're gonna make a way and do it. So she seeked out modeling agencies in the area, um, found artistic things to put me in, and you know, I come from pretty humble beginnings, so she found community theaters. And she was like, everything that is artistic in school, if you wanna do it and you wanna say that you wanna make this a lifestyle and a career, do that. Um, so she was really diligent about empowering what came natural to me. And she saw that I had a love and a passion for it, and she just empowered me in that. Because my mom is not artistic. My parents actually don't identify as being artistic at all. Oh, wow. um, so they were like, oh, we're on this journey with you, and we're going to learn with you. So it was about being open-minded and being committed to growing and um, my artistic journey and understanding that that wasn't going to look like other people's because of where I do come from. Yeah. Yeah. What was one of the auditions that you remember um, when you were younger, right? Ooh, that is, that's like, what was that experience? Because I, I imagine like trying to wrangle my yeah. nieces and nephews together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how they, like how they tap into yeah. the zone. No, great question. Um, uh, to be honest, I just felt like a hot mess most of the time when I was auditioning. <laughs> but like I was taught where there's a will, there's a way. Yep. So, I just stayed consistent. Like, I don't even think people can fathom the amount of auditions I've been on. <laughs> like, I ended up on my first series regular role when I was, um, what, 21? But I've been consistently auditioning since I was nine years old as an actress. I started professionally acting and really committed to the craft and taking classes at the age of nine. Yeah. So it's been a very long time coming. But I trusted, like, what's for me is for me and no one will take it away. And to specifically answer that question, uh, an audition process that I remember, 
probably all the ones that humbled me, like yeah. where I got super <laughs> close and I didn't get it. And I just had to, you know, dust myself off, give it to God and then continue going. Yeah. Um, Cause I think what a lot of people don't know is this industry. And I, I think being a successful artist, whatever your medium is, isn't about just talent. It really isn't. It's about resilience. Mm. It's about perseverance. It's about your ability to be malleable and grow with the times. Yeah. Um, but also through all that, staying true to who you are. So yeah, there have been auditions where like I had to fly out to LA where my mom and I were saving up for three months and then it was a two month process and then I didn't get that role. And it was like, okay, back to square one. Um, you know, also being like a young kid and dealing with the adversity of being like an Afro Latina, like for most of my life, even though my first language is Spanish, they didn't want to see me for Latinas. Mm. Yeah, so um, obviously because you girls melanated and proud of it. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> But um, <laughs> I think I just had to learn really quickly that the industry wasn't made for us, but I was going to change that. And I was going to be a part of changing that. Um, so I'm trying to do that, I think, right? Yes. I think I'm doing it now in small ways. And I'm Absolutely. just committed to that and opening doors for the people that come behind me and understanding that my artistic journey, as much as I love it, doesn't mean anything unless I'm sending the elevator down and allowing it to be an easier journey for other people that look like me. Yeah. And come from my communities. For sure. <laughs> With that said, right, it almost sounds like you didn't let anything stop you. So even the, the no's on the jobs that you really wanted. Mm -hmm. um, if you could look at the camera and tell like a young student, um, black Afro-Latina mm -hmm. uh, woman, some words of encouragement who just received, you know, a closed door, mm -hmm. right? Um, what would be some of those affirmations you would share with her? And Ooh, yeah. yeah, oh, okay, hi. <laughs> um, I would say to be consistent uh, about your growth. Your journey isn't gonna look like anybody else's and it's not supposed to. And to put those blinders on, like what God has for you is for you. And comparison is a stealer of joy and understanding that good things take time. Um, and you reap what you sow. So when you're a good steward of the gifts you've been given and you stay honest and sincere about who you are, um, the reward is so beautiful. And know whose you are. Um, and understanding that even though you love what you do, it's not who you are as well. Mm -hmm. So I know what I'm doing and whose I am. And that gives me peace in the moments that I wanna like a casting director, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I <got you. laughs> so one of the programs um, that you participated in was the SHINE program. Could you tell us like what that is and how did, how did you get exposed to that? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, it's probably no surprise. I was a pretty like bold um, and rambunctious child. Uh, and I found this program called Actors, Models, and Talent for Christ um, when I was nine years old and I went online on the little house computer we had and I printed it out and I gave it to my mom and asked her, I said, take me to this. Um, and she was like, this child. And she took me, <laughs> thankfully. Um, and that is actually how I got my first agent in Dallas, Texas, because I lived in Dallas for eight years, lived half my life in New York. It's been a, a, a blended lifestyle, but um, yeah. yeah. And still to this day, an agent that met me at that program is still my agent in New York. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, um, I'm a pretty loyal girl. I'm like, okay. I, I'm all about family and I'm all about um, tribe. Yeah. And I've really been blessed with some beautiful people along my career that I seeked out and I think God placed there. And I'm consistent about that. When you find people to grow with, you stick with them. Yeah. I think LA and this industry in general can um, skew people's perspectives yeah. in regards to like, seeking out what's quick and seeking out what seems beneficial in the moment. Um, but yes, all that goes to say, I found Shine as a kid. Um, I went through the program and I ended up getting signed with different agencies across the country because of it. But that was, that's just a testament to my mother and I's commitment to understanding that I didn't have certain resources that other up and coming actors had. So we were always looking and doing our due diligence about what's around me, where can I go to train? Because I want to, you know, hone my craft. Yeah. Um, and thankfully she listened to my nine-year-old self begging her to take me to some random place on a Sunday and then I trained with that company and um, yeah so a lot of the people I know in my life are connected to that program I did and obviously my faith is very important to me yeah. um, it's brought me a lot of peace not only in my life but especially as an artist so um, 
we found uh, kindred spirits in regards that we're also artists, but also faith driven. That was important to me as well. Yeah. Yeah. So what were some of those training programs? Um, if you have names, yeah. we love names, don't we all? Yeah. Um, if you have names of some of the studios, yeah. uh, which ones would you recommend? Okay, um, whew, it's, it's, I've been uh, acting for a minute, so there are a couple places, but when I first got started, it was AMPC, yeah. um, the Shine program. And then when I got to New York, frankly, just because I was so focused on school and you know, like there was a point in time I had three jobs and I was in college. So um, I really benefited from community theater. Um, I did community theater for most of my life. In my high school, I always did every musical, I always did every play, because I knew that it was important for me to keep growing, even if it wasn't in a professional sense. Yeah. Um, names, I know like out here, JRS, John Rosenthal Studios, okay. is an acting place I've like tapped into here. There are also so many amazing like black collectives here. Yep. Um, that like I know my personal friends are a part of that they would shame me that I don't remember specific names, um, but yeah I, I go where you feel heard go where you yeah. feel seen yeah. and also create community with the people around you like my friends and I even if we didn't have the time to go somewhere professionally we would try to write and empower and push each other um, especially like in college I, I didn't get to take classes um, outside of that but yeah yeah what's one person I know you mentioned your mom. Mm -hmm. Um, is there somebody who is an actress as well, a dancer, who you feel has really like mentored you um, in those times where yeah. you just you needed somebody to to go to, right, and connect Ooh. with on a different level? That is so hard. Um, there's so many. I'm so inspired by so many people. Yeah. Uh, I strive to be a multi hyphenate, and a multi hyphenate is just someone who does lots of things, right? That writes, dances, creates. Yeah. Um, I don't know, there's so many people. Obviously, like, the icons, Viola Davis, Angela Bassett. Yeah. Um, there's, like, plenty of Latinas that feel like they're pretty unheard, like Gina Torres, she's an Afro-Latina. Um, right now, I would say, like, Kiki Palmer. Also, like, since I was a kid, she was inspiring, but I just love how she's, like, so honest about who she is yeah. and does so many things and doesn't feel stifled to be in one box. Yeah. Not so many people, but yeah. yeah. So in becoming a face of a brand, mm -hmm. right, um, as you mature in your career yeah. and what you love to do, what does it mean to become the face of a brand? Like, Ooh. what are the different roles and responsibilities? Like, yeah. what's the difference? Yeah, uh, it's, it's really interesting, right? Because okay. the reason that a brand wants to work with you is because of like your je ne sais quoi, is about like, your aura, who you are as a person, okay. and also the talent that you bring them. But in addition to that, like employers and brands and companies and production houses, they want you to obviously complete an intention for them, right? Yeah. So I think becoming a face of a brand is understanding the duality and the juxtaposition of not losing yourself and being honest and sincere about who you are, while also knowing how to like grow with the brand, if that makes sense. Okay. So I've had to learn like as a young woman, I want to come in, I want to make a brand happy, I want to make a production house happy, yeah. I want to achieve the goals that they want met, but I also need to learn how to advocate for myself as a young woman and not lose myself in those moments. Yeah. Um, and it's also like a duality of like saying what I want to say because I'm very passionate about like my political views, my social views, um, but understanding that when I say it from a place of grace and I'm articulate and eloquent, People can't really tell me too much. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm pretty big on like not engaging respectability politics and not losing myself. Okay. But also understanding that um, I've gotten, and this is also not to police someone's like identity, right? Because I want people to be authentically who they are, but understanding that I've gotten a lot further with like sugar than salt. Yeah. That's a saying in Spanish. I didn't know if it translates in English. Is that, mm -hmm. that you catch my flies okay. with uh, sugar than yeah. salt. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, yes. with honey. Hey, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my kindness, and I think like being sincere and, and, and compassionate and empathetic about educational moments with brands yeah. has gotten me a long way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even from just looking you up and doing the research and seeing you, right? I saw that you posted something recently about like Hurricane Fiona. Mm -hmm. You also participated in National Dominican Day, like. Talk about the importance of giving back, especially directly, like where you're from, or um, speaking out on those those happy those events that are yeah, happening. Yeah, for sure. Because people are scared. You know, sometimes people are a little nervous. It's like, hey, if I post this, 
how might somebody else feel? I don't want to lose out or miss mm -hmm. out on the opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, for me, it's Im imperative that I uplift the community that I'm from. I'm nothing without my culture. I'm nothing without my ancestry, where I come from. Like, being from the Bronx, I was always very aware that I came from a lower socioeconomic status community. Yeah. And that came with obstacles, but it doesn't make me any less proud of everything that my community has been able to cultivate. So for me, it's always about giving back, and it's always about um, shedding light on things that don't historically um, get the attention that they deserve. Yeah. So I, I frankly am just so humbled and honored that I've had opportunities like that to speak about my community and speak truth to issues um, as a black woman, as a Latina woman, as, com as an immigrant household um, individual. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's super important to me. And I think the honest truth is that people have told me like, you'll lose opportunities or yeah. maybe people will not uh, find you as easy to work with. But for those people, I tell them, like, if you stand for nothing, then, like, what do you fall for? Yeah. And I, <laughs> Thank you. That is so crazy. Um, and, and it's like, as much as I love uh, how privileged I am to have made my art a career, because I understand how rare that is, I thank God for that every day, um, I understand that the vision is bigger than me. Yeah. Being able to go to bed at night and look at myself in the mirror and know that I've stayed true and I'm um, uplifting the narratives that need to be talked about is what is important. That gives me peace. Yeah. Um, because no job and no opportunity and no brand and honestly no dollar bill yeah. um, equates to um, my integrity as, mm -hmm. as a woman. And um, yeah, it's like if I've given a platform, might as well use it properly. So I speak pretty boldly about a lot of things, and I know it doesn't rub everyone the right way, but um, I don't mind, because then those are opportunities that I don't want. Because uh, they don't really. Uh, <laughs> so here on Pass, we believe in, in speaking things into the atmosphere, yes. right? What is one person or brand that you haven't had the opportunity of working with that you're like, this is one person that I look forward to working with in the future? Oh my gosh. You can give us three if you want. But <laughs> no, I, I can. I, I have too many. Uh, Coleman Domingo, Jonathan Majors, Viola Davis, Angela Bassett, uh, Zoe Zaldana, um, America Ferreira, Gina Torres. There's so many. Like I'm just yeah. so inspired by so many people, and I'm huge about giving people their flowers while they're here. Absolutely. Um, and there are also just so many young peers of mine that I'm excited to work with. Like yeah. literally my friends. I'm like, you're so talented. Like I can't wait to work with you. Who the friends? Uh, <laughs> um, oh my gosh, my own personal friends um, in my own life: Angelica Washington, Love it. Uh, Asia Cooper, Emily Tosta, Jason Hanel. Like those are just my best friends, and I'm I'm really grateful to be. Surrounded by a talented collective. And Issa Rae, oh, girl. <laughs> I was about to quote her and I didn't mention her, but Issa Rae says something really beautifully. Like, unfortunately, I think as disenfranchised communities and as minorities, we're told um, network up when we need to be networking sideways. Yep, absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, how did you build your community or your tribe? Did you move to LA with your tribe pretty much established? Or, like, like, how was it navigating, like, finding out, like, who your, your people was going to be? No, great question. I think a lot of people um, struggle with that, like, in, yeah. uh, in our industry and in L.A. Um, but when I feel like God really blessed me, I cheated a little bit because I was an actor for a very long time. I wasn't working, but um, I was an actor. So I knew a lot of people in L.A. anyways. Yeah. Um, and in addition to that, I, like, promised myself that I was going to show up as myself. And I think that people forget, like, when you dilute your voice and when you dilute who you are, yeah. the people that are supposed to be in your life aren't going to gravitate towards you. Mm. So I think for a lot of my life, I stifled who I was, and it hindered my growth. Yeah. Obviously, because I wanted to assimilate. I wanted to be accepted. I wanted to be loved, as we all do. It's a part of the human condition. Mm -hmm. But then I was like, wait, God made me in his image. And, like, I'm cool. And if someone doesn't dig that, that's OK. Much love to him. But, like, yeah. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm pretty dope, and I want to find myself dope. So yeah. if other people hop on that boat, then cool. So I think when I moved to LA, I was really adamant yeah. about showing up as myself and not, you know, feeling the need to conform to gotcha. spaces that I was in. 
So I showed up as myself, and I was like, hey, here I am. Like, I'm just an artist with a dream, and, you know, I, hopefully I find camaraderie in that, and I did, and God really blessed me with, I think, some of the most beautiful souls. But, yeah, I just, I also put myself out there. Like, yeah. I was like, okay, let me go look crazy in this dance class, and then it ended up going well, and I ended up meeting choreographers and stuff, and let me look crazy at this church showing up by myself, and still to this day, like, my sisters in Christ were my best friends. I met them at church. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was just, I was like, life is too short. Like, don't take yourself too seriously. Like, we get so, so, like, just um, hindered and, and, and kind of, like, we oppress ourselves. Like, we be our biggest enemy. And I was just like, I'm here, and I'm going to show up in love. And, like, in Spanish, there's this saying, que se hace con amor se hace bien, which is, like, what's done in love isn't done wrong. So I was like, mm. yeah. That's pretty good. What's done in love isn't done wrong. Yeah. Half quotable. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's good. So, what church did you go to? Look, oh, uh, I the name. Yeah, no, please. I, I need to be better at knowing all these names. Uh, Zoe Church and also the one. Okay. Yeah, I've gone to two because my friend group kind of goes to two, so I was like, all right, you can't get enough God, right? So I've gone to both. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I just I was like, you know, showing up for people and having them show up for me. I've been so blessed. Like my family in LA, I have no blood here, but I always feel like I have family because of the people in my life here. Yeah. Yeah. What are five actionable steps? that you, or let's say three, three mm -hmm. actionable steps that you believe a young dancer is looking to, to acquire or they should acquire. Yeah. Um, uh, know yourself, that sounds cliche, but like know what your own strengths are, yep. know what your weaknesses are so you know how to grow. Um, I think being introspective is one of the best qualities that an actor can have or an artist, a dancer, a singer, yeah. a model. Know what, what, what did you do to like learn more about yourself? Mm. Being honest about myself and humbling my spirit. Gotcha. And okay. being less of um, ego driven. Because I'm like, if I know what I'm bad at, I can get better at those things. Yep. And yep. I can go into a dance class now and go up to a dancer and go, excuse me, I wasn't hitting that eight count right. <laughs> it, was, it was looking messy. Can you help me with that? Like, what was that footwork? Oh, okay, cool. Now it's, so, but if I had ego, I'd be like, well, I, you know, I'm embarrassed. I don't want to go up to this person and ask them. Yeah. No. Mm. No, I have no ego. I will ask you what that eight count looks like, and I will tell you you ate that up and give you your flowers and said you did a great job, and now I walked away with the lesson. Yep. You know what I mean? Well, I also empowered someone, because I think artists, we need to hear it more sometimes. Yeah. You don't know what, what battles people are battling behind closed doors, and yeah. LA ain't easy when, when you're out here by yourself. <laughs> uh, so that would be one, know yourself. Do your due diligence. Like, okay. you have the internet, you have so many things disposable to you, seek that information out. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I would be looking up choreographers. I'd be looking up casting directors. That's a movie I really liked. Who produced that? Who's the DP? Who's the writer? So when I see that on another audition, I'm like, this audition I don't love, but oh my gosh, this is the writer that I looked up the other day. Yep. So I know what I want to give them. Does that make sense? So Absolutely. due diligence, do your research. Be a smart artist, you know? Help yourself win. Know yourself. Community. This. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. yeah. I feel like honestly that's the most important one. Like th this, you won't survive. Like without this, like look outside of yourself. Help people. People help you. It's about love. Like not to sound cliche, yeah. um, I've think I've become a better actress in class by watching. Mm. And I think that that's a testament to the way I try to um, orient my career. Yeah. I orient it about being smart and in tune with people and how they feel and how they react. Um, and how I can grow. And I learned when I do a self-tape with someone. I learned when I was an intern at a casting office for two months. That was interesting. Um, <laughs> actors were very mean to me, um, and that's okay. But I learned. I think it was one of the most formative experiences I had because I sat in a room for hours all day making coffees and printing papers, but I saw auditions. Yep. Um, so reach out. Like, be friends with people, community. So, yeah, those would be my three. Know yourself, do your due diligence, keep growing, like, stay committed to that growth, and community, like mm -hmm. write with people, sit down, hey, let's, let's get coffee. Can I hear about you, like how you audition or how you approach a script, how you break it down? Yeah, yeah. And so I'm discerning the moment right now and I feel like the audience has lots of questions for you. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're gonna open the floor for some questions. Yes, please. As Hi, a Hello, I'm Jessen. As a dancer, what other attributes did you learn um, that helped translate to acting? What else like? Um, skills did you learn that helped you in acting? Great question. Um, being adaptable and knowing how to take a note. 
Because if you know anything about a dance class, a teacher will go up to you and be like, uh-uh. Or change that, or that's not my step. And I took that into acting. Um, I think all of it is about connectivity. Like, when I came out here, I was taking professional dance classes for like eight hours a day at Millennium, at Playground, at Steps, at, at like all of these places, right? And people were like, why are you doing that? You don't want to be a professional dancer. Because that was never the goal. And I was like, well, I want to be the best artist I can be. Mm. So, and all of that has transferred. Now when I like, I got a random guest star role um, on the show called The Neighborhood. And they walked into my trailer and they tell me, oh, you're doing a salsa dance with Cedric the Entertainer in this episode. Did I know that? No. <laughs> what, did they teach me that dance in 20 minutes before I had to do it for the entire network? Yes, they did. But the reason I was able to pick it up and everybody was so like in awe of that was because even when I had multiple jobs and I didn't have the goal of being a professional dancer, I was committed to growing in that aspect of who I was. Even though I had no idea how that was gonna apply in the future. And just, yeah, a couple months ago, I was like, let's do this salsa dance, Cedric. And it went really well, and I was in a quinceanera. Like, you never know what the world's gonna throw at you as an artist, so grow in all of it. I wanna become a better writer, I wanna become a better singer, a dancer, um, you know, creative director when I look at things. Yeah. So, yeah. We got a question Hi. Hi. Um, my question for you is, where do you see yourself in the next two years? Ooh, two years. Hopefully, two years is pretty quick, but I'll put it out there because God does amazing things. But hopefully I will be a part of a show, um, not only in it, but like in some creative aspect. Because in projects I've done, I feel like I've done some consulting, but like that was like not official, right? So I would love to um, creatively be like behind the scenes as well in some type of way. So that is like an immediate goal. Um, yeah. You had a question? Of course, thank yes. you. Um, you mentioned being a s series regular. Can yeah. you explain what that means? Absolutely. I thank you for that question. A series regular is when you are on a series uh, consistently. So a series regular the idea is that you are going to be in every episode or almost, you know, 95% of those episodes. And as an actor, that's a, that's a huge goal because when you come up, right, there's like a, a trajectory plan. So you start off like maybe having one line in a scene or being background in a scene. And then you have guest star roles, which I did all throughout my childhood. And then it wasn't until I was much older that I got my first series regular role where my name is on a card and I'm a part of the lead cast of a show and I'm in every episode. Yeah. Um, so that was a goal of mine and I was super blessed to be able to do two, tel like two seasons of a show as a series regular. Um, yeah. How do you find your motivation? <laughs> <laughs> the cutest question ever. Just so cute. Um, my motivation, oh my goodness, <laughs> is not only, uh, I think, my love for what I do, but also my, uh, my people. My motivation, like historically, people who look like me haven't had these opportunities, so I will not squander it. Um, I don't take it lightly, the fact that I'm blessed to do what I love, so I find my motivation in <laughs> wanting to uh, grow and continuously open doors for other people. So, but to do that, I have to stay consistent yeah. in being the artist and um, using the blessings that I've been giving well, given well. Okay, so tell me. Hi, it's me. Yes, so you mentioned that you went to Actors Models Talent for Christ. Uh -huh. What was the process to entry to landing an, an agent? Yeah, for sure, great question. I'm like, I want kids at every interview. I would be much happier. Um, but the audition process for that, I was a kid at the time, so it was all super new and I was super uh, fearful. Uh, but it was just step by step, and I essentially had like a cold read scene. A cold read is when a script is given to you and you haven't seen it before. And that is typically how like a commercial audition goes. Um, so I was given a script that I'd never seen before, and they kind of give you a couple minutes with it and then you have to do it. So I did that, and then I did like a probably a little routine I made up in my mama's living room, and then, which was probably interesting and embarrassing. And then I sang uh, a song, and then 
they decided to like work with you because it was like an audition process, which I think a lot of like studios have nowadays. Um, but yeah, I did that, and then I spent months working like on different scripts, so like a monologue, right? A monologue for an audition, and then uh, a song that I would sing, and then a dance I would do, and then I did that in front of like a few agents and managers, and then they gave me callbacks, and then those people that gave me callbacks I met with, and then my mom and I decided who, decided who I aligned with the most, and, and then I signed with agents. So yeah, I've been signed for modeling since I was three, but then acting happened a little bit later, and that's been since I was nine. Yeah. I mean, this is amazing. Thank you so much for coming and joining us, and being honest and real, because I think a lot of times people shy away from that, so. On that note, y'all, this was a pivotal moment on your path, and you better tune in and push for it and know who you are. Thank you so much. Thank you. Love it, 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 love it,